What is up, people? How are you doing? I just competed this past weekend, and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to give my thoughts on it, analyze my own performance, maybe drop some things in here that end up being helpful to you and your own training or your own preparation for competition or the actual competition experience itself. I competed at, it's called the DBDS Pioneer Open at the Dallas Convention Center this past weekend, and it was actually actually in the middle of a fitness expo. I've never done a competition like that. That's not at a gym, uh, so that was a bit different for me. It was also a two-platform meet, so two platforms running simultaneously. You can hear what's going on on the other platform while you're lifting and the other judges, um, and there was just a lot going on inside the expo itself. It was like a mini mini Arnold Expo. So there was uh, the main stage was a bodybuilding stage. There was uh, a section for like wrestling and jujitsu, a section for I saw people practicing shot put. Um, and there was also a Zumba stage. <laughs> so there were Zumba instructors up there. And there were always people dancing the entire time I was there. There, there were somebody there, people there in the crowd dancing, following along to the Zumba. Uh, I did get teased hard because I walked in and I saw above all the other booths I saw a Chick-fil-A sign beeline straight towards the Chick-fil-A booth and there's nobody actually there there's no Chick-fil-A nobody working there they just have a Chick-fil-A sign to fuck with me so I didn't appreciate that part uh, and then we also had the powerlifting section where my meet was going on I uh, competed in the 125 kilo or 275 pound weight class and I weighed in at 120 kilos or 264, 265 pounds. So not quite filling out that weight class uh, quite yet. Um, and it was a good time to start with my results. I went eight for nine, eight out of nine successful lifts completed. I missed my third bench press uh, and I finished with a 620 kilo total or 1366 pounds. And that's seven and a half kilos over my total that I did around the same time last year. So can't be too mad at it. Uh, there were a lot of strong ass people there. I was easily the weakest one in my weight class. Uh, the guy who won my weight class, I think, squatted around 600, benched like 440, pulled uh, like 660, 650, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, I mean, as much as it sucks to not win or to not come to top three, it's also cool to see people that are that much stronger than you because I feel like in a way I'm like, okay, I'm not done. I'm not plateaued. I have room to grow. I can get as strong as these other people. And uh, the guy who won best lifter out of the entire meet, uh, he was in the weight class above me, but uh, still managed to get the best dot score. He benched, uh, squatted 700, deadlifted 700, benched like 460. So just strong ass humans there. Okay. Very humbling experience for me. <laughs> um, we'll just take it lift by lift, tell you what my thoughts are and what, uh, what's going on in my head during the actual competition. So before the meet, I can't lie, I'm kind of discouraged because I know, I know already how much stronger these other people in my weight class are than me. And so like, I have these nagging thoughts that are like, why, what's even the point of competing? I've talked about this before, but what's even the point of competing when you are not going to win? You're not going to come top three. You're going to be last in your weight class. Like, why are you even here? This is embarrassing. Just being honest. Like, these are the actual thoughts that would nag at me. And kind of how I would quell those thoughts, I would just have to remind myself that I'm here for my PRs. I'm here to represent my training well and to represent my coaching well. And... I'd have to do that by making lifts and by hitting a PR on my total, maybe PRing my lifts in the meet. Um, so I'm here for me. I, it's a foregone conclusion. I'm not going to win or come top three. I have to be here for me and my own PRs and my own experience and my own enjoyment. And I have to let go of the results of the meet. And I really just have to worry about my own performance. Like I'm here for me. That's what I started telling myself and kind of helped out. And uh, what made those thoughts go away even more was just getting to the actual lifting. So no more time to think, just <laughs> do the lifts. So squat warmups, uh, they felt good. And I was happy about that. My last competition, I distinctly remember my, the bar just feeling heavier than it should on my back, heavier than I wanted it to on my back in the warm-up room. And warm-ups felt perfectly fine. Didn't have to do too much. Did the empty bar for a couple sets, one red for a set, two reds for a set, and then three reds. 
for a single, waited a couple minutes, did three reds again for a single, and then I opened up at 200 kilos or 440 pounds. And that first squat is always where the nerves are the highest, and then after that, they kind of flush out. So my looking at the video, my opener was fast, faster than it felt. Uh, my technique was a little off. I felt my weight get forward. I felt my heels uh, pick up off the ground just a little bit. And uh, yeah, I feel like that's just kind of the nerves of getting the, the first lift out of the way can mess with your technique a little bit. And that's why you have to pick an opener that is light. You have to pick an opener that is not a PR, that is not at your top end, that you know you can do. I opened at 200 kilos or 440 pounds. I've done that a hundred times in the gym. So I knew it would be no problem, even if I was nervous, um, or even if I didn't know how my second or third attempt would go, I knew I could at least get on the board, avoid bombing out temporarily by putting in a fast opener. So 200 kilos went well. Uh, my next attempt, uh, was 215, which was the plan all along to go from 200 to 215 or 474 pounds. And again, felt pretty dang good. I, uh, squatted, 215 the week before the meet that was my last heavy squat and if we compare those videos side by side the 215 before the meet looked a lot slower than the 215 on the day I think I finally figured out a good peaking strategy for my squat I feel like this is the first time that I actually got that peaking effect that people talk about for my squat I feel like I get it for my deadlift every time still don't feel like I've gotten it for my bench but for my squat I could tell my performance was a lot better than it was in the gym, than it was in the last one, two, or three weeks leading up to the competition. And kind of to backtrack, I feel like that's another reason that you should compete. Even if you're not gonna win, even if you're gonna come dead last, another reason you should compete is because it's going to bring out the best in you on that day. It's rare that you're actually gonna max out your singles on all three lifts in one day in the gym. It's rare that you're gonna have the mindset to basically make that process go well and actually be able to give it your all in a gym environment but on a, in a powerlifting meet where you're trying to pr your total you're trying to squeeze as much kilos out of you out of you that you can without missing a lift uh, that's the kind of situation that brings the best out of you and brings the most strength out of you uh, and so that's definitely what happened on that day so i hit 220 or sorry 200 for the opener fast 215 smooth and the number I had in my head going into the competition was 227 and a half kilos or 501 for the third attempt. However, every meet that I've done, I've missed my third squat. <laughs> and so as good as 215 felt, I felt better knocking a little bit off of the number I wanted in my head to taking a number that I was more confident that would be heavy, but that I could for sure get. And so I went with 225, which is 496 pounds. Didn't get to break the 500 pound, uh, didn't get to break the 500 pound barrier in competition, but I was okay with that. I was okay with securing my third squat, getting a competition squat PR that was five kilos over the best squat I've done in competition. And I feel like that's kind of representation of how you ought to evolve as a power lifter. I think most guys, most people get to a point where maybe a meet here or there, they'll, they'll, ca they'll care about a specific individual lift. But my mindset going in was as much as I'd love to hit a 500 squat or a 600 deadlift, uh, both numbers I've done before in the gym and in competition respectively, my mindset was more about going nine for nine and PRing my total. And if PRing my total means I don't get as high of a number that I want, uh, as high of a number as I want on my individual lift, that's okay. You have to be okay with that because as a power lifter, how you measure progress is your total going up from meet to meet. Yeah. If I hit a squat PB and, but then it was, you know, an RPE 11 and then I don't have enough in the tank for deadlift to do something good there, or I overextend on the deadlift because it's a number I think I have and I really don't and I end up missing and my total goes down or I hit the same total that, that I hit last time. That's going to sting a lot more than if I knock a couple kilos off what I want in my head for an individual lift and go for the overall PR total. So I think that's something I'm definitely proud of is kind of that mindset evolution of not, I, I didn't show up here for one lift. I didn't show up here for a number on an individual lift. I showed up to go nine for nine, which I didn't do. I went eight for nine and to PR my total.
Um, and speaking of things that sting, another reason I felt more comfortable knocking a couple kilos off my third squat attempt, it hurts a lot more to load more than you can hit and to miss than it does to load a little bit under and make it. Like looking back on lifts that I've hit, lifts that I've missed, I have much more regret over lifts that I have overextend myself, overextended myself on and missed compared to lifts where maybe I had two and a half or five more kilos, but I, but I ended up hitting it. Missing lifts feels like shit. <laughs> it does not feel good. And uh, yeah, that's kind of another reason that I was okay with that. And uh, again, as I can continue to ramble on on squat, another thing that goes along with that is I thought, I want 227 and a half, but if I only put in 225, suddenly 225 like seems a lot lighter, you know, like there's less pressure to hit that <laughs> than I guess the, the 227 and a half. So for all those reasons, that is kind of the strategy behind how I was feeling during squats and why I picked the numbers I did. I was always going to hit 200 opener. I was always going to hit a 215 second attempt unless I was weaker and the day told me otherwise, but my strategy going into the meet was good enough to where I was strong enough. Um, and I wanted 227 and a half. I wanted to break that 500 pound barrier in competition, but I saved it. Okay. What, what's the best way to represent myself and my training? And what's the best way to walk out of here feeling confident if I already know I'm not going to win? Making lifts, getting a, a, a PR that you know you can get rather than overextending for something you don't know you can get. That's how I walk out of here with my head, my head held higher than going five for nine or six for nine because like I'm trying to keep up with these stronger people or you know I'm reaching for numbers that I don't have any business reaching for that's not the move so uh, that was pretty much that on squat walked away pretty happy with that 5kg uh, squat PR uh, competition squat PR and we had a little bit of time until bench press it was a three flight meet, so that means, and I was in the third flight, so that means the first flight does all three of their squats. Second flight does all three of their squats. And then my flight goes and we do all three of our squats, 10 minute break before bench, and then the first two flights have to bench again. So I had quite a bit of time to just relax, hang out in between, uh, in between the events. So I would just walk out outside the convention center, you know, pack all my stuff up, grab my bag, walk out <laughs> and just like go chill on a couch in one of the lobbies, eat a little bit, just scroll, post, you know, keep my Instagram story updated on how things are going. Um, so I got to chill in between. I also didn't have a handler this day. That's something I should have mentioned earlier. So it was just me flying solo. Um, and then I go back there to bench press never really have the highest expectations of, of bench press. I feel like it's not a huge total total builder for me. Like my squat and my deadlift are for everybody. They're huge chunks of your total. But for me specifically, my bench is uh, disproportionately weak, I would say. And so I didn't have a lot of hype. I didn't have a lot of expectations going into bench press. Um, I wanted to hit 130 kilos or at least 127 and a half kilos. I didn't accomplish either of those. I successfully got 125 kilos or 275 pounds on my second attempt. Um, I opened up with 120 kilos, 264 pounds, and uh, it felt good uh, in terms of training to competition standard. Uh, I didn't get any red lights on the bench press except for obviously the red lights on the lift I missed. Same thing on squat. Didn't get any red lights on any technicalities. Um, so I opened at 120 kilos and I felt ready for the commands. I didn't feel like the start command was taking longer than I was expecting or the press command or the rack command, um, you know, feet stayed on the floor, butt stayed on the bench, didn't have any technical issues there, which I'm happy about. Uh, 264 pounds for the first attempt move fine. I said, okay, I'm going to go up to 125. If it feels good, I'll go up to 130 for my third. If it doesn't feel good, I'll go up to 127 and a half for my third. Did 125 for a second. It did not feel good. <laughs> it felt like a third attempt. So I was like, all right, shit, don't really have much room to grow here. I'm just going to try and get the two and a half kilo jump. And at least, uh, you know, that would be, if I, if I were to hit that for my third, it would be matching my best competition bench press, but didn't have it. Didn't have it. It never even felt like I did really. Like it was no surprise. I, I brought it to the bottom. I was like in the bottom, I could feel this feels heavy. Like this feels heavier 
than I might be able to overcome. Maybe that's a mindset thing. That's something I should definitely work on. Like stop thinking about how heavy it is during the actual lift. Um, but yeah, I got it about halfway up. Couldn't lock it out on either side. Spotters had to take it. And uh, yeah, that was that on the bench press. Spotters were great. They were fast. Never missed catching anybody who missed a lift. Um, so yeah, that's bench press. Quite uneventful going forward, man. I think I just need to get bigger. I think I need bigger arms, bigger shoulders, bigger chest. I think strength-wise, my programming for bench press is fine. Maybe I need more singles. If anything, I, I, I suspect I need more heavy singles in my program just to get more practice with that. Uh, but I think the biggest thing I need to work on is just getting more jacked. Like, I need to go hide in a cave and bodybuild for a couple years and obviously while bench pressing and then I think I will see bigger improvements in my bench press just got to get more jacked so bench press not my favorite swept it under the rug got three more lifts to do got to lock in for those for deadlift that's my preferred lift that's the most fun part of the day for me so having a, I got to have a short memory on that missed bench press attempt um, and it wasn't too painful it didn't sting too bad because it's only two and a half kilos that I'm missing right I got 125 I'm missing 127 and a half it's not like I didn't squeeze everything I had out of bench press so I wasn't too broken up about it um, as much as I wanted the PR still we got deadlift and that's my jam um, again got some time to just hang out outside the convention center grab a, a c4 from the booth they were just giving out free c4 energy drinks all day and uh, yeah had some time to relax finally went back there as the second flight was starting their first attempt for deadlift I went back there and started warming up one red two red three reds four reds simple uh, so my last warm up that means it was 484 pounds or 220 kilos and uh, deadlift was feeling good. There was never a time where it felt like, damn, this is heavier than it's supposed to be, or this isn't quite feeling good, or, uh, you know, my, my back hurts or something. Like, things were feeling just fine. So I go out there uh, for my first attempt, open up at uh, 240 kilos or 530 pounds, and it flies, no problem at all. And uh, this is the funny thing with my deadlift. It always gets such a boost on meat day uh, and, and from a taper and from a peak. Like I can always pull so much heavier in a competition than I would on, uh, than I would in the gym. Example, exhibit A. <laughs> uh, my second attempt was heavier than any lift that I have hit in the gym in months and months and months. I, I, yeah, maybe since like, November or something when I competed at the at the turkey pole at the strength co where I pulled 545 tried 605 and missed um, my second attempt at this competition was 257 and a half kilos and that is about 565 pounds give or take and again went just fine um, it was a little slow with the lockout. That's always how my deadlifts are, and I have to be careful that I'm not hitching or ramping. Um, but second attempt went well, so I'm happy. I'm building momentum with the first, making sure that it's easy, that it's a weight I know I can do, that I've done in the gym plenty of times to avoid bombing out. Um, I have You have to make sure that you get at least one squat, at least one bench, and at least one deadlift so that you don't total a big fat goose egg at the end. So secured my... Uh, total on the board with that first attempt avoided the bomb out got 257 and a half and uh, kind of similar to squat with the third attempt deadlift situation <clears throat> I wanted 275 or 277 and a half which is 601 to 606 but again what I wanted even more was to make the lift and to not miss and I what I wanted even more was to walk away with a PR total so if I overextend myself on this third deadlift and I miss I don't get a PR total I walk away feeling much worse <laughs> than I walked away um, and so instead of 275 277 280 which are numbers I were want I was wanting in my head in the week in the leaks weeding up in the weeks leading up uh, I went with 270 pounds which is only two and a half kilos under my best deadlift in competition it's 595 pounds and yeah, I had more. Honestly, I, I probably could have put two and a half or five more kilos on there 
and matched my PR or got a small PR, but I'm not that mad about it. Like I'm not broken up about it because I, I hit a lift. I hit the lift. I hit my third squat. I hit my third deadlift, which are things that I did not do at my last competition. And that feels like shit. And, uh, it's still 595 and it's still moved pretty smooth. Like <laughs> I can't, I can't be too mad at that, even if it's not a PR. Um, and yeah, after that, my day was done. So I finished with a 496 squat, a 275 bench and a 595 deadlift for a 1366 pound total or 620 kilos, seven and a half kilos over my best total. And I think I can add more to that. I think if I compete again, what I have on my, what I have my eye on next is the Texas state championships in January. I think I can add 10 kilos to that total, maybe 15. If I can add five kilos to the squat, five kilos to the deadlift, two and a half to five on the bench press, I think I can see another solid improvement at the next competition I do. Uh, I feel like I have a lot of good momentum after this one. Um, I didn't completely toast myself. Like none of the lifts were grinders. Like I've had harder squats. I've had harder benches. I've had harder deadlifts, which uh, kind of allows me to jump right back into training without having to take a bunch of time to recuperate. Um, yeah, all in all, it was super positive experience. Like always, everybody at the meet was super friendly, uh, super welcoming people letting me use their baby powder, offering to chalk up my back. Cause they see I'm like reaching around trying to do it myself on the squat. Um, so yeah, it was a good time overall. I'm happy with my performance. I'm not happy with the results. Like I'm a little competitive. I'm, I'm a little bit competitive. And so I had to let go of that <laughs> for that day because everybody else was so much freaking stronger than me, but it is what it is, man. It just makes me excited to get back to work and to get bigger, get stronger and compete again and take home first place in my weight class win best lifter at a meet one day. That would be amazing. Uh, these are probably pretty far off goals for the size I'm at and the strength I'm at. You know, I'd be more competitive, not necessarily more competitive if I cut weight, but the numbers I'm hitting match better with guys that are like one or two weight classes lower than me. Like they didn't match that well with the weight class I was in, which is like, I'm freaking squatting 500, deadlifting 600, and I'm the weakest one in my weight class. Like what the hell, man? That's pretty stiff competition. But like I said, it's motivating too, because it tells me that I can go further. I can get stronger, um, regardless of whether I feel stuck or not. Um, and yeah, what, and I got some Chick-fil-A after the competition because <laughs> I had to, I had to redeem that moment I had where I was looking forward to it when I walked in the expo. Uh, so I got some Chick-fil-A after competition and went home. It was still pretty wired and it was like hard to fall asleep. But yeah, it's Monday now, kind of coming down from it, thinking on it, analyzing it, and uh, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm content with my results. I uh, hope I said something in here that was entertaining or that was helpful. Um, you know, hopefully kind of the mindset around it's, it's unlikely you are going to be the strongest person at your meet. Only one person is going to be the strongest there. And so this advice probably applies to you where you may have to let go of your attachment to the results of the meet. You may have to let go to your placement or to winning and you have to focus on your performance and your PRs and your total and your lifts and representing your training the best that you can. And the best way you can do that is by going nine for nine or as close to it as possible and PRing your total. Um, representing your training well, representing my coaching well, that was something that was uh, in the front of my mind as well. And yeah, the best way to do that is not to overextend and like mix lifts and walk out of there feeling shitty. It's to hit lifts, pick numbers that are smart, um, and yeah, walk away content and with a, a little bit of a, a PR total. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Peace out.